What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Debbie Royale YouTube channel. I'm your host, Kevin Cohen. I'm back with Christian Williams, and we're doing another top 25 team. This time, we're going down to Texas Tech and be talking about the Texas Tech Red Raiders. We're both excited about these team. You guys should be probably excited too. We really, you know, last year I kind of pinned TCU being my team last year before they were good. I promise. Like I, I pinned that. It's on a pod. It's it, we got the receipts to you. Texas Tech really reminds me of that school. It's really going to come back to the quarterback play and how that looks. But we're going to be diving into everything here, the depth chart on both sides of the ball, what we can expect from them, transfers, recruits. If you're a college football fan, you're a Red Raider fan, stick around, hit that like button, and we will catch you guys on the other side. All right, let's dive into this bad boy. Let's kind of look at it. So we're going to start with Texas Tech. Just talk about kind of what they were um, last year in 2022. They went eight and five. Um, Joey McGuire, you know, he came out firing and got people excited last year. They weren't supposed to be that good last year. Um, you know, points per game is 34.2 points against. Uh, they did OK last year, you know, 29.2. There were some times where their defense kind of let them down. Um, but overall, you know, they looked good. And when you look at their offense and you're looking overall what they what they had there, um, you know, Zach Kitley was there. He came in as offensive coordinator, um, second best offense in the Big 12, 461 yards uh, per game, fourth in the Big 12 in scoring. So they were right there. I think one big thing that led to them kind of struggling was their quarterback play and, and just the inefficiency. There. They had a lot of turnovers from the three quarterbacks that started for them. Um, you know, when you're looking at it overall, over 15 interceptions from them. Um, and, but they finished strong. So they had a couple losses to TCU. They were right in that game against like Oklahoma State, Kansas State. They really should have won those games. And then they finished strong. You know, they they won their last four. They won the Texas Bowl against an Ole Miss team from the SEC um, that was reeling. But hey, they, they took they took care of business there. And you have to give them credit. They're a very well coached squad. So what was your takeaways last year from this this team? Yeah, just the quarterback kind of held them back. And I think, you know, when you look forward to this year, a lot of the continuity is good because there were definitely signs of a good team there. I mean, even in that TCU game, their their defensive line was given uh, TCU trouble at the very early parts of that game. I know Ty Tyree Wilson was a big part of that. We'll talk about the defense in a second. But the offense returning 72, almost 73% of their, uh, you know, main – performers i think that's uh from guys with at least 150 snaps or something or like that so um you know they transferred in dre mccray i think he can be one of those playmakers that helps out the quarterback the interesting thing though so donovan smith is gone tyler shuck is slated to start uh baron morton is also there that's really the key here you've got 60 percent of the offensive line coming back rusty stotts i think is how you say it um he's coming in as, as a quality starter as a center you've got Taj Brooks back you lost Roderick Thompson some of this stuff just doesn't matter to me because I think a lot of that stuff is separate from the scheme and I think you know we're looking right now at a team that could take a pretty big leap forward despite having signs of being good last year yeah we're gonna dive into defense defense is loaded man i'm telling you right now this defense is a lot of fun to talk about the offense though yeah i mean i think it has some mismatched pieces but you know it's up to you know what we saw last year with, with you know that offensive coordinator zach kitley he kind of came in if he can kind of put the right pieces in play then we're talking about a team who can compete in the big 12 like and, and we're going to talk about one of those like hey man what the hell texas tech won 10 games this year and i think that's possible tyler shuck's got to be better though like i think that's like the key when we're going to get down to this and we as we go into the players um notable losses kind of like you mentioned donovan smith I, I, donovan smith to me i've always been kind of high on donovan smith i, I liked his upside at the position I, I thought he was a very he was the best athlete obviously like he really gave him that you know 1500 yards last year 12 touchdowns eight interceptions that was a tough one i i thought that it it's weird that they went to tyler Shaw. i felt like they picked him like that's why Donovan left. Donovan basically said, oh, you picked him to kind of go there. Um, I, I I get it. I understand. Like, maybe he just didn't, you know, when you look at the game logs, he didn't really necessarily take this job. He had the opportunity there. I think the game that stands out to me was that Kansas State game, the one they should have won. He threw it 48 times at 359 yards and two touchdowns, two interceptions, but didn't look amazing in that game. It's kind of the reason why they lost. Had they won that game and maybe turned it around, that could have been there. Um, Trevor Roberson, Trey Cleveland, but really the two big losses is their quarterback running back. But I don't know if like their, you know, program 
losses that you can't overcome. I think that they're, they were there, but there's a lot of good guys behind them. Yeah. I mean, I think that's, that's the, the thing here, right? I mean, you know, you move over to Stroud or Thompson. I think Taj Brooks looked like the better running back last year. I think Cameron Valdez has the ability to be a better running back. So I don't think you're losing a whole lot from that respect. And I think, you know, another year in the system for Tyler Shuck, Tyler Shuck was a, a, a high recruit. He was very, yeah. very highly regarded as a recruit. He transferred out of Oregon. He came here uh, and he really hasn't had the career that I, I think he's wanted, but this is a really good opportunity to have that late career resurgence i think there's times when quarterbacks just need more snaps and more time and if you give tyler shuck the starting job i'm interested to see what he can do with a little bit of continuity because he really hasn't had a whole lot of that throughout his career yeah no i agree and 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 when you're looking at what they did in the recruits so there's a there's a constant thing here in terms of what texas tech staff likes to do from what i have seen you know when they came in with a 23 class 28th overall composite rank which is really good for texas tech like you want to find yourself in that 25 to 30 35 range for this kind of program hey composite rank at 28 is good they brought in you know not necessarily the biggest pieces in terms of offense they really go after kind of those three-star kids and try to kind of develop them that's something that you're going to see a lot with this new coach staff they did go strong in the defensive side though so we're going to be getting into that overall like Anquan Willis is a guy to kind of watch you know six foot 220 already he came in as an athlete but they put him at running back you know at, from Wichita Falls and there's always those guys that have come in as athlete designated and then they go to running back and you're like holy crap where did this guy pop off at Anquan could be that guy like Anquan can really step up and be there um and again you see it kind of went after the wide receivers Tyrone rest West is a name to kind of watch um just based on like the preliminary stuff that I watched. I really kind of liked his tape um, and, and what he kind of had out there for them. But overall, I thought this was a really good class in terms of like just filling needs, but not necessarily you don't have so many needs on there. And they really, you know, they went after the transfer portal to fill those needs on the offensive line. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have a whole lot to add here other than I, I kind of like Jake Strong. I, I watched a little bit of tape on him and, you know, if Shuck and Morton don't work out, maybe the, the freshman gets a little bit of run. If that's the case, I don't think we're correct about this being a 10 win team, but, <laughs> um, but I do like him for as maybe, you know, a piece in the future that, that kind of takes over maybe not next year, but maybe the year after. Yeah, and so when you look at the transfers, two guys that we talked about. I'll talk about Rusty's stats. I know Christian was talking about DeAndre McCray before the show. You know, Rusty comes in from Western Kentucky. They really needed this guy. A lot of injuries, lackluster play on the offensive line. They were inconsistent. You know, when you're looking at, like, just, just their overall numbers, very inconsistent there. They need a guy like Rusty to come in and kind of solidify that that front line for them, that center position, um, especially, too. Like, when I was going through the, the stats for them, they were the they went for the fourth most uh, fourth down attempts at 52 last year. They converted 33 of those bad boys, um, and so they're at 63 percent, you know, com, you know, conversion percentage there. I think you have to have a good offensive line to do that. And with Rusty in there, and you can tell this coaching staff is not afraid to go for it in those areas. You need a guy like Rusty to kind of step in. So that's a, that was a good gift for them. Yeah, and then you know, furthering that on on DeAndre, I think he goes by Dre McCray. Uh, last year for Austin PA, uh, 76 receptions, over 1,000 yards, nine touchdowns, uh, followed up from a freshman year where he had seven touchdowns, almost uh, 800 yards. So this is a kid that I think can come in. He's got inside-outside versatility. He's a little small. Um, that doesn't necessarily matter as much in the Big 12, but I am interested to see. He's slotted as one of their starters right now, and I think that he could be a bigger piece of this offense than maybe some are projecting. Yeah, and then when we go through the guys that we wanted to highlight, kind of talk about as being impact players, Tyler Shuck, hey, it comes down to you, bud. Like, fifth-year kid, can you step up, be that guy in that room, and kind of be that consistent and, and take care of the football? I think the biggest thing is that their defense is going to be so good that really, even in the Big 12, if they can just manage, you know, 28 points, get into that range, you're going to be in most games in the Big 12, even with that defensive side. Taj Brooks is there, Duran, Brad, Bradley, Miles Price, and, and I want to, you know, give a little sleeper area we have a we have a patreon that we talk about our sleepers of this of the conferences and every team um and mine is baylor cup tied in come on cup you've been in the college football for a while now he came out there last year 12 catches 132 yards you know he's versatile maybe he has that shot you know he, he did definitely didn't get the start that he needed at texas a&m but he's still out there and if you can kind of add that red zone dynamic to this offense i think that would be huge for them yeah 
I think that's us clinging to the the recruiting stars. But you I know, I will not what? give up. I will not <laughs> give up. That's that's fair. He's got a dynamic skill set, and I think you know when you look at what this team desperately needs in terms of their pass catchers, I think Cup has some of that. So I hope he sees the field this year. This could be the year. Uh, just like quarterback, tight end is one of those where it sometimes just takes a little bit of time, and you see that late breakout. It'd be really interesting if both Shuck and Cup could do that this year, and then everyone's transferring to Texas Tech next year. Hey, all we need is a Shuck Cup breakout. The Cup's getting second, you know, second round buzz. Shuck's going first round. Then we're really in it. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, all right, let's jump over to defensive side where they return a lot and they have a lot of talent on a defensive line. So Chris is going to take us through that. Yeah, so the, the highlight of this defense is Jalen Hutchings. You know, one of the best nose tackles in the country last year. Walks into a situation where, you know, he loses Tyree Wilson next to him, but both guys, Miles Cole and Tony Bradford Jr., uh, next to him now are returners as well and, and played a lot of snaps last year. So you have some continuity on that defensive line. You have continuity in the linebacker room. All three of those guys are returning starters as well. They really like Jacob Rodriguez, this coaching staff, and, and think that he can be one of those impact, you know, 100-plus tackle type of guys. Uh, they transferred in C.J. Baskerville to, to start at star. I think that that could be an impact player. But overall, this defense is extremely exciting. I think they're fairly deep. Um, but this starting unit is one of the better ones in the Big 12, if not the best defense in the Big 12, I, I might say. I'm not yeah. sure. I'm not sure about that one. It seems a little bold, but like when you look at it top to bottom, this team is very, very solid on defense. No, they're well coached. Last year, they led the Big 12 in sacks. They had 31, um, had the ninth best red zone defense, too. I think that was one thing that you saw when you go through those box scores. Hey, teams just didn't score against them. Obviously, towards the end, you know, they had some kind of some shootouts. But realistically, in that red zone, you know, they they look good. And that was a good big step because historically, Texas Tech doesn't have the best defense. Uh, and that could be from the coaching philosophies they've had. But you could tell they flipped that around. And now you have a defense that's ready to go. And this is without Tyree Wilson. You know, when we're talking about guys that they lost, they lost Tyree Wilson. And, and really, inconsistently, like, I think Tyree got drafted based on his, you know, his potential, his ceiling. I think they talked about about him last year maybe being a little inconsistent but again you're still losing a top 10 guy like that's gonna you're gonna take some kind of you know a little bit of hit there sincere massey kobe minor reggie pearson uh, you know junior I, the secondary did take a little bit of a hit but this team was so deep they took a they you know they did a great job of filling in after them but they they got the, all the returners coming back almost and, and then that's going to be good for this big 12 defense yeah i mean continuity on both sides of the ball is always a good sign of like teams that could take a leap forward. I know losing Tyree Wilson is kind of a big thing. Um, but like you said, there was, he, he was pretty inconsistent. A lot of what garnered that draft capital was the traits. Um, I, you know, he didn't get double digit sacks. I think that some of his production is actually replaceable for this team. So I think when yeah. you're looking at that, you're pretty excited about this group. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Now this is where I was talking to you guys about is You should be excited if you're a Red Raider fan on the recruiting side. Jordan Sanford, this kid is is fun to watch. You know, position wise, he's a 21 uh, rated safety. They definitely needed to kind of shore up that that you know that secondary, especially that safety position. Um, 5'11", 185, probably going to be a tweener though. Like when I I think he can move out to corner too. Like so, it's going to be interesting to kind of see how they use him out there. Brendan Jordan's a big boy though, six foot two hundred. He comes in as a four star as well, um, thirty one. So they really targeted that. Dylan Spencer, another guy in that defensive line, six four two hundred. And, and when you are two forty, that should be two forty. That's that's a typo, damn it. That's on me. But two forty, uh, Dylan Spencer, big kid, you know, four star kid as well. Like, and, and you're looking at this, you go after their edges, you go after these guys, and, and those are the guys that you like to see there. Like they really, really went after these guys. Isaiah Crawford is another edge as a four star. He's on the smaller side at two ten. He gets that way room like they're reloading in that defensive line position a lot of these guys are not gonna have to use right now like they're gonna get him in that weight room red shirt them put him out there after they might use some of these secondary pieces but they and you can tell this is the most defensive recruits we've done in one of these before they went after the defensive side of the ball yeah and this isn't your the texas tech team that you remember with patrick mahomes rolling out there and just chucking the ball and they have to score 50 points to win games like they're building a, a very, very good defense, and I think that's the right way to do it in the Big 12 now. Yeah. Um, a lot of these guys, that you know, I, I wouldn't be shocked if a few of these guys end up being impact players. Um, and the good thing about the depth on the defense is they don't need these guys to come in and be impact no. players. If one does, that just means 
that's that's a special player. So, um, yeah, really, really good job on the recruiting trail. I'm interested to see, you know, if their success this year kind of pushes this into some, you know, top 10, top yeah. 20, top 15 class territory, which would be pretty fun for a Texas Tech squad. I mean, if you can consistently get your guys, especially the edges and the defensive line drafted in the first round, like if you can get those guys and get them drafted in that area, you're going to have ammo on the recruiting trail. And they did it with Tyree. And then what comes next? Okay. How does that look? And that's, that's kind of where you get those things. Um, Some key transfers as well. So guys that are probably going to be more impact in certain terms of like, Hey, this season, um, Ed Trail Tillman, he's coming over from Oregon. He came in as a three-star kid. I know he's athletic, didn't really get the run that he wanted in Oregon, but he definitely has that traits. He's got those traits, those things that you love out there. Steve Linton's another one. Uh, Syracuse, the Texas Tech. Again, 6'5", 215, big edge kid. Um, Quincy Ledette, he's coming over from ULM, so kind of transferring up. And then CJ Bakersfield, coming from San Diego State, who had a really good defense last year. Like, so they they did a good job of kind of building around what they needed to do. Um, obviously, Rusty Stats added that, and McCray from the offensive side. This side, they filled in these guys. These guys to be rotational players. They can plug and play, and they hope they get something from them. But I will say, like, Steve Linton was a highly touted four-star transfer. Like, he was, he was coming out. A lot of teams wanted him, and he picked Texas Tech. Yeah, yeah, and – Great player. I think, you know, he goes from he's he's listed as an edge, but also he's an outside linebacker. So he kind of walks into that um, Tyree Wilson role. So I think, you, yeah. you know, you're looking at a guy that could walk into, you know, eight to ten sacks this year. We could see a little bit of and even uh, a push towards the NFL draft for this kid. But, yeah, I mean, I really like what they did, uh, you know, adding players in general this year, including recruiting. Um, but yeah, they, they hit the recruiting trail because I think they see an opportunity here. I think there's, they have the ability to go out and win the big 12 and I'm not here to give hot takes yet. We, ha- we haven't gotten to that portion of the show so oh, let's get let's get there so impact yeah. players you know he talked about Jalen Hutchings uh Tony Bradford Steve Linton those guys again I just think that defensive line is really the impact where they can go can they get after the quarterback can they get after Quinn Ewers can they get out through some of these tougher guys Dylan Gabriel can you go attack those guys TCU's offense like how is that going to look and can that defense really keep you know, keep their offense in the game. And, and I think that's where it really matters for all of these guys. Is there anything else you want to highlight with these guys? No, Taylor Demerson is uh, one of those other returners that I think could be really, really good on the back end of that defense. I feel like every single one of these, I talk about the the back half of the secondary <laughs> uh, and the defensive backfield, but it is super important, especially in the big 12 where, you know, they're going to play Texas. And, you know, I, I think they've got, they have Oklahoma this year. They don't. Um, so they miss them, but they, they get Oregon. They, they have to have guys that can, you know, shore up the, the deep third. And I think Dadrian does that really well. Yeah. All right. Let's get into the schedule. So when you're looking at their schedule overall, I like the schedule. Not Wyoming at Wyoming, they should take care of business there. Second game of the year is an interesting one, Oregon. And I'm going to tell you right now, Oregon better not like, at home, Texas Tech is going to be playing there. Like that's a that's a tricky game for Oregon. You know, Oregon's got national title hopes and at least the you know playoff hopes there. Texas Tech could get them there, and, and the Tyler Shuck revenge game, right? Is that yep. what we're going to call it? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly where I was going with it. Is that's that could that could make or break Tyler Shuck's year too? Is like, yeah. how does he handle this this matchup against his former team? I'm. That I've got that one circled already. We're a couple months away when this is dropping. I can't wait for that game. That game's gonna be fun. I think that yeah. when you realistically, like, man, they could do it. And then they got Tarleton and again with you Big Twelve schedule makers. I don't even know what the hell Tarleton is, but shout out mm-hmm. Tarleton. Uh, West Virginia should be a W there. Houston will be a closer game. Baylor again going to be a tougher game just because it's a big 12 Kansas state BYU TCU Kansas UCF and in Texas so the schedule is tough the schedule is definitely tough in that in that area but I do think that you know their over under is at seven and a half so I think I'm over on that I think I, I think at least eight wins I feel like I feel pretty comfortable that they're going to get the eight wins and I think they could get the 10 if they realistically kind of came out um, and played their football Red Raider football kind of on that defensive side kind of control the ball not turn the ball over there um, any other games or thoughts about their schedule that we want to throw out there uh, no, I, I'll just say, you know, in our next uh, college football manifesto update, we are putting best bets in there. One of the best bets I have in there is over seven and a half. It's plus money right now. So um, I, w- I will be betting that. I'm not saying that you all should, but I will be betting the over because I think this is a good, good football team. 
Yeah, and and they're ranked. This is, they're they're ranked twenty second right now, right? That's that's where we're at. I think that's where we're yeah. at. Yeah. So we're at twenty second. Like when you're looking at that, like I I don't think that they go under that. You know, to finish the year, I, I do think that they're going to finish as a top twenty team. Whether that means that they're going to push, you know, Big Twelve status, I don't know yet. I'm not there yet, but they could. They could push that that area and be that like sneaky team for Texas Tech. Um, I think they have a great coach in Joe McGuire. I think they hit that one out of the park in terms of the the hiring system last year and what they did. Um, but again, look at this defensive you know th this is how they win this is how those sneaky teams win the big 12 is on the defensive side and they can definitely do that here yeah i mean you mentioned a, a tcu like uh rise for them this year i think when you look at the the bones of that tcu team it was just returners and a few more impact players right and i think that this team has has the that same kind of blueprint, right? You've got a ton of returners, but you've got yeah. guys that come in and they could make an impact. I think, you know, we it, we opened with it, but it all comes back to the quarterback. If Tyler Shuck or one of these guys can step up and just be fine, I think this team is an, a guaranteed eight-win team. I think they do have upside to potentially win the Big 12 if Texas and Oklahoma kind of falter. Um, exciting team. I, I'm, I really like this football team. All right. We appreciate you guys. We'll check you guys on the next one when we go into the number 21 team as we break these guys down. If you enjoy this, hit that like and subscribe button. We'll, we're going to keep going over them before the college football season and get you guys ready for your preview. Uh, but we'll see you guys next time.